Hey, Hiker Trash fam, I'm back here with another Sun Hoodie review, and this one is a head-to-head -head between the Patagonian Sunshade Technical and the Backcountry Tahoe. So as always, I'm not sponsored by either of these companies. The links in the bottom are not affiliated links. I get nothing if you click them there. They're just there for your convenience. I want to keep this review as the same as the other review up here, where we reviewed the Ball Leaf, the Patagonian uh, Caprolini Cool, and the Outdoor Research Echo 2. Um, these two hoodies were suggested in that video in the comments. There were a couple others. I'll get to those. Um, but these are the two that I'm reviewing today, and I want to keep it in the same format as that video. Now, I know the Patagonian Caprolini Cool, there's a little snafu where they said originally that it was rated for 50 SPF, and it turned out to be a range of like 17 to 45 with an average of 34. Patagonian, as a great company, did offer a recall. They offered to refund money for everybody that bought one. I kept mine. Um, but this one, on their website right now, is rated SPF 50. The Backcountry Tahoe 2 is also rated SPF 50 plus. Again, I haven't heard of any snafus on that one, but you're getting a good level of protection with both hoodies. The thumb holes of the Patagonian Sunshade Technical are pretty decent. They're not as deep as the Bali Leaf, um, but they do have better coverage than the Outdoor Research Echo hoodie. The thumb holes are about the same depth as the Patagonian, so they both have really good coverage on the hands with their thumb holes. Material-wise, the Patagonian Sunshade Technical is 100% polyester, with 68% of that polyester being recycled and all of it being through fair trade polyester. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good to me. The Backcountry Tahoe 2 is 88% polyester and 12% spandex, which means it's not going to be as moisture wicking as the Patagonian Sunshade Technical. The Patagonian has odor control. In fact, I've had this in the backcountry for two nights and three days, and I can contest it does not stink. Like the Ball Leaf, the Backcountry Tahoe 2 does not have odor protection. So it is not going to give you that odor protection if you're going to be several nights in the backcountry. The cut of the Patagonia is pretty good. With a hat, I can put the, sh the hood up and have it not come off. But if you need a little bit more, there's a button right here that will allow you to tighten the hoodie up. The Patagonian also has a little pocket right here. Now you can't put much in it. I don't even think I could put my cell phone in it, but a couple snacks or your trash for the day would be fine. The Backcountry 2 also is a nice fit, and the hoodie stays up with my hat. You can get the Patagonian in three colors. This gray color, a blue color, and a camouflage color. Um, sometimes they are a little hard to get because of supply chain issues right now, uh, and you can get them on the link below. They run $79. Right now, you can get the Backcountry Tahoe 2 for $69.95. Both of these are great hoodies, and I think if you got either one of them, you'd be happy with them. The Patagonian for $10 more, though, I think is a better value. Its material is 100% polyester, so it's going to make moisture better, and it's got odor control. But either hoodie is going to make you happy in the Backcountry. Why do I like the Patagonian Sunshade Technical? I like it, one, because it's 100% polyester, with 68% of that coming from recycled materials, all free trade. I don't know what that means, as I said, but it has to mean something good. The front pocket is okay. Odor control is definitely a plus if you're going to be in the backcountry for a couple nights. 